Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, friends, colleagues, ocean experts, ocean lovers. We, my name is Olga Mashkina, Aktion France, and together with my colleague Pierre, we have the honor of welcoming you to this first uh, workshop of the EU for Ocean Coalition. We wait uh, just a few uh, moments till all of us join, till all the participants can join, and uh, we will start. Stay with us. My name is Olga Mashkina from Action France, and today we will be hosting this workshop on behalf of the EU for Ocean Coalition, and together with uh, my colleague Pierre, we will be facilitating this workshop. Before we start, just a few practicalities of Zoom. Even though all of you by now are uh, very experienced using the Zooms, few moments. We, as a participant, you are muted, but you're allowed to use chat and question and answers. I see how all of you are doing very well. Main point is uh, we'd like to use chat mainly if you have uh, some problem with uh, or issue with the Zoom functionality. And if you want to ask clarification question or complement discussions, you use the question and answers button. It's on the, on the bottom of the screen. And uh, these are uh, uh, your comments will be seen by panelists and facilitators, and uh, they will be able to directly answer your questions or take them uh, uh, orally or in written way to the the panelists. So our time is scarce. We have uh, a lot to do today. Uh, so we will we hope that our speakers are also uh, concerned, are very cautious of the time they have. We, the webinar will be recorded and uh, will be disseminated after. And uh, to, before we jump in, just to say that uh, even though we planned this events, event, uh, to be in a physical form that we could be networking and do exciting things together, we will try to do it uh, online, uh, which has its limitations, but we, we still try to do the most of it. And ocean literacy is fun, and uh, we hope we will enjoy, and all of you will enjoy, and we will have a full day, really two days of uh, great events. So, now I, we, we see why, why are we here today, to just remind you a little bit of uh, the, the context of what, why we um, brought all of you together today. It's a very first event of uh, the EU for Ocean Coalition, and uh, it was launched uh, in June uh, by the commissioner at the um, World uh, Literacy Summit, and uh, since then we have grown our communities. We have three communities, and today and tomorrow you will um, will bring together and present what has happened during this time, what uh, founding members we have, what exciting things they have, and most importantly, we will start to co-build new uh, ocean literacy initiatives. We bring together your ideas, your uh, capacities and resources of the founding members and people who can join us. And um, also, I don't need to say also why we're all here. It's, it is obvious because we all are connected and committed to the ocean. Just a few words about how we will run this two-day event. We are excited to say that we are have quite a lot of registered participants. We have uh, planned uh, an exciting program for you with 11 workshops, and uh, we will go um, on, on the screen. You see that we have uh, planned this first day today when we let you discover our three communities, the, the EU for Ocean platform, the, the EU forum, the network of the European Blue Schools, and uh, we go further on a second day tomorrow, looking through the different uh, thematic groups on uh, climate and ocean, healthy um, and clean ocean and food from the sea. And we finish the day tomorrow by mobilizing at the sea basin level. So we have five uh, sea basin events tomorrow. 
Um, now we we go back to the opening, uh, setting the scene for these exciting two days. What would happen now? What uh, first of all we will um, get an official opening from uh, Christos Economy, the director from the Directorate Maritime Policy and Blue Economy of Digimare. Then we will uh, jump into the panel discussion on policy drivers to the sound ocean literacy and we have um, the panel uh, discussion with three people. Um, we then uh, ask, ask you, uh, we, we, we introduce you what we will uh, plan to do ahead and instead of uh, me telling you all about it, we will have five uh, pitches from uh, five uh, online uh, workshops and people will introduce and tell you what what they're planning to do and why you should be there. And uh, we will close the opening session with the, in, uh, with the announcement of the names of the winners of the Young Ocean Waves contest. Um, so um, we go into the today. I would like uh, to give the floor uh, to Christos. Uh, Christos, you can uh, officially open our um, first uh, EU for Ocean workshop. The floor is yours. Yes, uh, so uh, good morning, Olga, and uh, good morning to all participants. I hope you can see me. Uh, it is a great pleasure to welcome so many of uh, the, uh, let's say, uh, experts and uh, willing to help in setting up this uh, coalition and uh, the work around uh, ocean literacy because I saw people joining from all around Europe and even farther, much farther. So I'm, I'm very pleased to see this enthusiasm around this uh, today's event. Uh, as you said yourself, it is really the second step after the official launch back in uh, June in, uh, during the Ocean Literacy Summit. Now we go to more operational work. It is the second step and I'm sure we will have many uh, uh, useful discussions in the next uh, day and uh, for t t the rest of the day and for tomorrow. It is obviously the time to start the common reflection. As you said, there are a lot of ideas there. Uh, the communities have already started developing uh, very useful, um, let's say, contacts, networking. It's now time to do this together to boost ocean literacy in Europe. We rely, of course, to out-of-the-box ideas. So uh, it's not only the experience, it is also uh, the novelty and uh, the enthusiasm that we are looking for in the next two days. Now, I would like also to uh, specifically welcome the distinguished panelists that uh, they will follow on this introduction. Uh, particularly uh, Minister uh, Ricardo Serao Santos, uh, of course, the chair of the CERI from Portugal, the chair of the CERICA group uh, of the uh, European Parliament, distinguished uh, Tonino Picula, and also from uh, the side of uh, IOC uh, UNESCO, uh, Francesca Santoro. So they're all experts in the field, and obviously they have the policy perspective as well, which we need to frame the discussions that will follow. Um, it is true that they also have undertaken uh, quite a lot of work in the past, so we really need to look into that, what has been done so far and where we want to go uh, in the future. Uh, finally, I would like to convey the apologies of our commissioner who had to switch his presence to another session, but uh, stay ensured. Uh, he will be with you uh, later today and he will exchange with the youth. And uh, I'm sure it will be very, very interesting session. So please stay on. And uh, without saying anything more, I would like to wish you all uh, a very fruitful discussion. Uh, 
uh, we are looking obviously uh, with a lot of interest to the conclusions that will come out of these two days. And so uh, we all hope to have uh, and create together and strongest prospect for ocean literacy in Europe. Thank you very much and uh, go ahead with the enthusiasm I expect you to have. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Christos. Um, I'm going to go back to the uh, presentation. You introduced uh, yourself also the uh, panelist. Uh, so I'm not going to, to go in very detail there. Uh, as you, you mentioned, we have three people. I hope that Tonino Piccola could join to now uh, because he was in the, uh, the participants. Uh, and uh, in these three persons, uh, what we try to, to do is to bring people that were committed uh, to the ocean for quite some time at different James, scales. James and if I, go, if I go back to what uh, Olga said at the beginning, the launching of, a, of the uh, EU for Ocean Coalition took place at the OL Summit uh, in June, that was uh, co-organized by Francesca Santoro, from IOC UNESCO, and we will have uh, Tonino Piccola bringing the European Parliament view and uh, the views of the Sirica group, intergroup, and then uh, Ricardo, I don't think we need to, to uh, explain uh, who is Ricardo anymore, and he was not so long time ago, let's say, also at the European Parliament. Uh, so that's important to bring these people, and they will tell us um, better than us how important it is to bring people towards the ocean literacy initiatives. I will start to give the floor to Francesca. Uh, Francesca, how important is ocean literacy for you? And by saying that, we will grasp a bit the initiatives and the work that you are carrying out. Francesca, you? Hello, hello, thank you, thank you, Pierre. Uh, and uh, thank you to the European Commission for having invited me. Uh, of course, it sounds really like a natural invitation, as, as you mentioned, um, the launch uh, of this coalition was done during the first virtual ocean literacy summit that was organized by the IUC or UNESCO, uh, Education of the Last World Oceans Day. And also, uh, it's really a pleasure for me to be here as, uh, and with Ricardo, because we actually started the discussion of this uh, project back uh, some, some years ago, uh, when uh, I, I kind of like advocate for this project with him and with uh, the former member of the European Parliament, uh, Gisela Meissner. So uh, they were like uh, very much uh, forward looking, both of them, because they pushed for this project. And so I'm, I'm very happy to see that now uh, is happening. Uh, wh why is important ocean literacy for me? Well, actually it's taking most of my time right now, so it's, uh, it's uh, very important for me. But also it's quite interesting because um, I have a background in, in marine sciences and I've done a lot of uh, different jobs in this field, uh, including my previous job before doing this, still in IOC of UNESCO, was um, being the coordinator of the tsunami warning system for the Mediterranean and Atl North uh, Eastern Atlantic. And I was also the head of the tsunami information center for, uh, for the region. And so somehow I had already worked on ocean literacy because I was developing a number of educational activities for, uh, for kids, for policymakers, for decision makers, uh, on uh, the importance of knowing, better knowing uh, tsunami risk or other sea level uh, related risks. So in a sense, I was already working on ocean literacy, even though it was not labeled as ocean literacy, which I think is uh, maybe the, the same feeling that many people uh, participating in this workshop have. Maybe we have already done a lot of uh, activities on ocean literacy, not labeled ocean literacy. So now I think is the moment of uh, getting all together uh, and working for uh, for the future of the ocean. Many thanks, uh, Francesca. Uh, let's move to the European scale. Uh, and I welcome Tonino Piccola, the chair of the Sirica Intergroup. Uh, 
Tonino, uh, from your uh, experience, political experience, you have occupied positions at all scales, I would say, yeah? let's say at uh, local scales in uh, national government uh, in Croatia and now in the European Parliament. Can you tell us a bit from your point of view how connected you are from the ocean issues and from the ocean literacy uh, dimension in particular? Thank you, thank you, Pierre, for introductory remarks. Of course, good morning uh, to everyone and uh, thank you very much for inviting me today. It's really my honor to join all of you today and to give my support, first of all, to European Union for Oceans initiative. Um, I'm also speaking uh, today on behalf of European Parliament uh, intergroup, Sirica, that gathers 107 members of the Parliament uh, from 23 member states and, uh, what is important, six political groups. Uh, one uh, could conclude that we are also a broad coalition united in our mission to support development uh, of a strong maritime dimension. We will do that within European strategies and the main initiatives proposed by Commission uh, with ocean literacy as one of our corner store activities. Ocean literacy has been a major preoccupation of the Sirica Intergroup since the previous mandate. As uh, Mr. Serrao Santos will recall, he himself once uh, uh, was Sirica Vice President. In the previous mandate, a number of events were organized in the framework of Sirica on ocean literacy and pilot project on plastic labs was also developed. Um, regarding current mandate, even through our planned activities were unfortunately changed due to pandemic situation, we do have ambition plans to work on uh, ocean literacy. In fact, we have one of our vice presidents, Madame Alicia Holmes, appointed as uh, Sirica vice president for uh, ocean literacy and biodiversity. Uh, involvement and awareness uh, of citizens of maritime issues uh, via ocean literacy incentives is a central issue for uh, our intergroup. I will finish uh, with a personal note, as you said, aside from maritime politics, another interest of mine is foreign affairs. Uh, I served as a Croatian foreign minister and now I'm foreign affairs coordinator of my S&D group in the parliament. So I do believe this dimension is useful in my work since challenges such uh, marine litter or the rise of sea levels and the sea temperature have finally become a really global issue and a matter of broad international cooperation. Thank you. Many thanks, uh, Tonino. In fact, you already started to introduce uh, uh, Ricardo Serral Santos, Minister of Maritime Affairs of Portugal, uh, that has been, I would say, in the marine and ocean literacy scene, as you mentioned, Tonino, for quite some time. So I will just leave the floor to you, Ricardo, uh, from your perspective, maybe not in a new position, but from the experience you had earlier, ocean, ocean literacy, which reigns does it ring? Uh, thanks, Pierre. Thanks, Olga. And nice to see you, Christos. That's a long time we're not together now in a virtual scene. I'm also very pleased with the opportunity to greet my fellow uh, uh, member of the European Parliament, Tonino Poiculo, Picula, uh, and of course, uh, Francesca uh, Santoro, a fighter on, the, on this great battle that you have, we have to pursue on our ocean literacy. And let me, yes, social literacy, if I may say, I take it in brackets, has always been imbued in my daily life as a marine scientist. In the 80s, I produced an author, one of the first early series on marine life for the Portuguese uh, TV called uh, Live in Islands. What was about communicating marine life and ecosystem? Those times we had not this wording on uh, ocean literacy. And as ocean scientist during 30 years, I understood the importance of bringing scientific knowledge to society. 
as a member of the parliament, as uh, uh, I was referred here, I was involved in promoting Orishan literacy. I'm very, very glad and very pleased that we uh, now DG Mar is, is funding this, uh, this project uh, EU for Oceans. Because the investment on ocean literacy is still in need of special engagement. And mostly when we compare with other parallel systems as for instance, forest and woodland, uh, literacy and just to say one uh, the fact is that the the rational connectex or link and the political recognition of the vital role of the ocean still requires today great encouragement and uh, investment oceans for too long seemed lost in translation in global politics and in global policies but i think now it is it is changing really strongly changing during the last five years and in my current position as minister, I stand my conviction that uh, literate citizens are essential to support effective implementation of political decisions concerning our seas that should be based on, logic, on knowledge and science. And this is a struggle of major importance in our era of post-truces or post-factual issues. Ocean literacy uh, is therefore more, most needed to inform citizens at large, including, and most important, to inform politicians. And, but nowadays, we have to recognize that uh, it, it is more complex. It requires more complexity. Today is not just a matter of promoting scientific evidence through literacy, but also to refute and fight the lies in fake news and post-truths or in post-factual beliefs, and you know what I'm talking about, uh, of the deniers of uh, uh, the process that are troubling our oceans and uh, our planet. Uh, for too many people, the ocean, I have to recognize, is, to, is still that strange system that is opaque and visible, and that represents more dangers and, than goods. Therefore, ocean literacy is called to play a role in building a connection of citizens to ocean and based on knowledge. As Minister of the Sea, I'm also a promoter of ocean literacy. When I speak with sea, seafood professionals or young entrepreneurs of sea-related startups, but I'm also a recipient of, of knowledge. And it is a, this is how I see ocean literacy a collaborative process in which all actors can be knowledge transmitters and knowledge receivers. That's why these uh, platforms are in fact uh, really um, very, very important because they bring together the different stakeholders in, in the field. But this must be always formed by the best knowledge and the best science we have. In this moment, as you say, we have to fight against Fake news. We have to that deny some of the the, the, the process that they are putting in danger um, um, the our oceans, like acidification, like global warming, like like the um, desoxygenation, and the big effort has to be made to now not only to bring the ocean to uh, steady state, to wealthy conditions, and uh, Ocean literacy is absolutely needed for, to do that because we will not uh, will not uh, be able to provide good policies if we don't have the society uh, behind us helping us, and uh, we need this uh, society being formed. Thank you very much. Many thanks, uh, Ricardo. Uh, I will start from some of the message you gave it's there for a long time it starts to be visible not to be what will make it a success today uh, ideas of preconditions of good things to do way to work that would help and guide us maybe i start from you ricardo just to give us a couple of thoughts and then tonino francesca if you can complement ricardo uh, sorry, uh, Pierre, uh, but there was um, a stop in your talk, and I okay. 
Yeah, I don't okay. know if the others also had yeah, been. Maybe just to say, if you think about the movement that we start now, okay. what, what do you see as the preconditions that would make it a success and not to be lost in translation again? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Pierre. Uh, uh, okay, I, I, I see, of course, the, the, the coalition as a landscape. The, uh, we need to advance uh, ocean literacy based on uh, scientific knowledge, of course, and in, in, in to promote good policies in Europe. It, uh, I think that it is uh, more than a, a big project. Uh, it is a way to promote uh, networking, to finding synergies, to invite everyone, uh, bringing, uh, what uh, I think this is a way to bring together people that will create this kind of blue community that will involve cultural diversity, and you have a lot of cultural diversity um, in Europe, and I hope he has the, the, the fingertip of the European Union. I hope that in one or two years, ocean literacy will be embedded in society as strong as forest and woodland literacy. Uh, uh, of course, I expect that the EU, EU for Ocean to lead the major engagement and ownership of a large range of stakeholders, acting as aggregators of action sectors and, uh, and, 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 um, and actors, of course. I would like also to see the coalition promote an increased inclusion of the ocean in formal education. This is very important. And, uh, this is a, a, an effort that we are also making uh, here in Portugal through the, the Blue School uh, and uh, integrating uh, ocean and seas and uh, knowledge about our, our ocean seas in the uh, curricula of the, the, the schools. Uh, and uh, also, again, please try to put it in the political agenda, uh, in the EU agenda and in the member states along with funding mechanisms like this one. But I'm very also happy to see that the new Horizon, um, Horizon Europe will have a mission. In five missions, one will be dedicated to healthy oceans. So that's a good, very good prospect. And you have a big role to, to perform playing uh, more with the society, the young people, and uh, the, the st all the stakeholders in the blue economy, for instance. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tonino. And you, you heard Ricardo saying it should be high on the political agenda, it should be internalized in policies. From your perspective at European level, three conditions for success or how to make it happen? Do you get any clues, tips, ideas? Yes, agree with uh, uh, Ricardo. Uh, I think uh, ocean literacy is uh, about um, creating awareness of the uh, link, uh, copula between the green and the blue, between the terrestrial and the and the, and the maritime. Uh, we need the blurring uh, of the lines between terrestrial and the, and the maritime. It's for sure, and this means uh, also at all level of the policy making, one is not enough. There are many good incentives regarding uh, awareness rising uh, via formal education, it's very important, uh, such as uh, embedding uh, ocean awareness in a school curriculum, as mentioned. Uh, these are important initiatives uh, and the bottom-up nature of ocean literacy must not be overlooked. Just one example. Tourism accounts for around 20% of the blue economy. An ocean uh, literate tourist could have a, a positive benefit on the greening and the sustainability of the sector, uh, particularly on very fragile communities like islands. The ocean literacy could equally lead to new blue uh, locations on the island, which in turn could lead to job creation and sustainability of the blue economy on islands. However, uh, mainstream of uh, awareness at all levels will require policymakers to consider how they are bringing positive change. Uh, it's uh, not just about the citizen, but about ocean aware policy makers, researchers, uh, businessmen from coastal communities, 
to inner city dwellers, to rural and landowners, for the European Union for Ocean Incentive to be a success, it must bring in actors from a very broad range, sweat of disciplines, including uh, regional and urban development, economic development, design, education, and the culture, uh, plus uh, those from energy, environment, and blue economy sectors. I believe that the European Union for Ocean Coalition um, has all preconditions to do everything mentioned before and to be one of the EU success stories in the future. Many thanks. Uh, Francesca, from your perspective, uh, maybe a double question. Precondition for success from what you see emerging and then maybe also how uh, could you support or how could we best connect between these EU initiatives and what you are leading at the uh, international level? Yeah, uh, for, for preconditions, I would say um, three, three words. I think this coalition should be inclusive, sustainable and creative. I think inclusive because we need to, to get on board people that are not yet on board. Uh, we are, uh, you know, uh, Ricardo said I'm a fighter and I, and I think uh, we all are fighters because we, I mean, the connection with the ocean is very strong for all of us but we need to get on board people that don't see the connection of you know, human beings with the ocean. Uh, some, some time ago, I had a, a talk with uh, an entrepreneur in Italy and I mentioned, yeah, what, what is your interest in the ocean? And he said, I'm not interested in the ocean. I'm very interested in climate change, which means that you know, we have a lot of work to do because of course uh, the ocean is strictly connected with climate and the ocean is a major influence on climate as one of the ocean literacy principles says. So I think that's the work that needs to be done. Uh, going you know, outside of our circles, outside of the usual suspects that we usually invite to, to our meetings and that normally come to our meetings. And we need to, to get those people that are not yet on board on board because we need everybody to, to win this battle. Uh, and be sustainable because I think, you know, we need to, to think and in some of the words that were mentioned by the previous speakers, uh, it was already said, we need to be sure that this is not just a project, but that there is um, already a life beyond this two years project. So we need to start thinking how this can be sustainable and how it can be supported uh, by other actors uh, so that it will continue in the future. And finally, to be creative, because also, um, as it was mentioned at the very beginning of this uh, workshop, we need to think out of the box, also because we need in a very uh, challenging time, uh, we, we are still in an emergency, in a sanitary emergency, so we need to think really out of the box, box. We, uh, be creative, uh, look also to other uh, sectors, uh, see what are the successful stories in terms of communicating important messages uh, and see how we can learn from others uh, that are not, you know, strictly part of the, of the ocean community. That's my experience. Uh, my experience in, in working on an international level uh, on ocean literacy was really that one, to really try and uh, talk to artists to uh, entrepreneurs and I think that's what also uh, the UN decade of ocean science uh, will do and wants to do and that's how we could you know connect to the work done in Europe on an international level as you all know uh, next year uh, the UN decade of ocean science will start um, the good news is that ocean literacy is really high on the agenda of the decade of ocean science uh, the first version of the implementation plan was, uh, you know, commented by a very large number of stakeholders and all of, all of them, basically all of them said that ocean literacy should be really one of the pillars uh, of the decade. That's the reason why uh, a new outcome uh, for the decade was, uh, was added, which is an engaging and inspiring ocean totally dedicated to ocean literacy and also one of the challenges uh, identified, one of the 10 challenges identified for, ocean, uh, for, uh, for the decade is specifically referring to ocean literacy, how we can highlight 
all the values. Uh, and I'm talking also about the importance of the ocean in our culture, especially in Europe, of course, but everywhere, uh, and how we can remove the barriers uh, for the behavioral change that we need to see to advance uh, ocean sustainability. And finally, let me just announce uh, here that on the 15th of October, uh, the first call for action for the decade will be published. So I invite the ocean literacy community and beyond to apply to propose uh, decade actions uh, on ocean literacy and try to uh, follow a little bit what I said, be inclusive, be creative. Many thanks, Francesca. So the call will be probably a good opportunity for strengthening some of the connections between what you uh, support and the EU ocean coalitions. Let's return back to Tonino and Ricardo. At your level, with your responsibilities, how do you think you could support the coalition and what will emerge from the coalition and its collective actions? Let's say, uh, Tonino, uh, a couple of ideas, uh, then Ricardo. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Uh, yes. Uh, can you hear me? Very well. Hello. Tom. Okay, please. yeah. Uh, let me start saying uh, while the European Parliament uh, uh, continues to take actions uh, on several different maritime policies uh, on a sectorial level, um, Sirica Intergroup works uh, uh, to ensure that uh, Europe uh, of the seas remains uh, a major cross cutting and um, well uh, identified issue. And the CIRICA stimulates debate and uh, promotes concrete actions in support of the comprehensive uh, approach to maritime related policies. Uh, we take into account uh, the links between environmental sustainability, maritime industrial policy and transport, research, ocean literacy, and exploitation of marine uh, living resources. I personally, believe that uh, new relevant um, policies being developed at the EU level could be subject to blue impact assessment. This would encourage policy makers to be ocean aware. Equally research and innovation actions could include an ocean literacy component. A European Union Green Deal, uh, the new industrial strategy on the revised Maritime and Fisheries Fund uh, reflect uh, EU awareness uh, of the great possibilities offered by the seas and the oceans. And these opportunities are key for the sustainable economic growth of the European Union's uh, territories. Of course, the full potential of the new EU Green Deal cannot be realized without complete understanding of the role played by maritime sectors maritime environment. They contribute to sustainability goals, protection of biodiversity and uh, emissions reduction. The sea has the potential to provide sustainable food and feed. Ocean-based solutions could close the emission gap by some 20 percentage. New blue uh, skills can also harness the potential of renewable energies. And as a CIRIC group, we are happy to continue our active engagement on this topic, the European Union for Ocean Coalition in the future. Thank you. So clearly an opportunity within the Green Deal, uh, whatever is connected to it. And a challenge, what I understand, is to make sure that blue is recognized by all in its own importance. Ricardo, on, from your point of view, uh, which role could you play? How do you see yourself connected to what the EU for Ocean Coalition is doing? Thank you, thank you, Pierre, uh, for the questions. In fact, I, I understand that we already supported the EU for Ocean platform uh, since the Portuguese Director at General for Maritime Policy is a founding member of this platform. 
and uh, there are others, Portuguese entities that are involved. I could refer to Ciencia Viva, Life Science, or Ocean Forum, the Portuguese, or even Erosion, which is not Portuguese because it's a, it's a, it's a uh, is, but it's based in Lisbon, at least headquarters in Lisbon. So this will hopefully involve the Portuguese society more and more. Uh, as I have mentioned in Portugal, the Ministry of the Sea, through the uh, General Directorate of Ma Ma Marine Policy, leads an educational, an educational program named the uh, Blue School, Escola Azul, the Blue School program. The idea is that uh, the sc school integrating the program develops a project about the ocean and related teams involving also local communities. The initiatives developed under this project literates children and teenagers, but also adults, adults around, promoting a better understanding of the role of ocean in every, uh, everyday life, bringing them closer. In fact, it engages all CIF uh, sectors with the goal of improving the level of ocean literacy in the short and long term. And it is supported by universities, government and non-governmental organizations, municipalities, industry and companies since 2016. And we currently have more than 220 schools throughout the country and more than 29,000 students involved. I would very much appreciate to have these schools of our Blue School program becoming part of the European network promoted by the EU for Ocean Coalition. I believe that um, uh, we could benefit to learn a lot from each other. As I mentioned before, reciprocity, reciprocity and cooperation is key. Thank you very much, Pierre and Olga. Yeah, th thank you, Ricardo. Clearly, like uh, as you said, uh, Portugal is very much a source of inspiration uh, for us like uh, initiatives taken the many initiatives taken by different countries and we do our best to well connect between the eu blue school program of portugal and what the eu network of blue school will develop and carry out i think we slowly come to the end of the uh, panel session i'd ask uh, each of you uh, maybe Francesca, Bantonino, Ricardo, just to share with us one statement that you would like people to carry over during the workshop and beyond when the EU for Ocean Coalition will work. Francesca, one statement that you would like us to keep? Um, I, you know, there, there is a, a quote uh, from Pablo Neruda, uh, which I really like, is one of my favorite quotes, uh, which is, Necesito del mar porque me enseña. I need the sea because it teaches me. And I think we need the ocean and the sea to teach us that we are all interconnected. Uh, you know, the first principle of ocean literacy says there is only one big ocean. And I think, uh, especially again, in the time in which we live in, we need to all be aware that we are interconnected, that what we do here, I'm currently in Italy, what I do here in Italy has an effect uh, on the other side of the world and vice versa. So I think um, also the pandemic has teach us that uh, we need to think that we cannot solve the problems uh, by ourselves. We need to be connected. Uh, we need to be uh, aware that we need to ask help uh, to each other, we need to rely on everybody energies, and we need to rely on everybody passion. So I think is is uh, that's my message. Uh, let's remember that the ocean, the sea, can teach us a lot of things, and uh, I hope uh, all the success uh, for this coalition. Thank you, Tonino. One thought to share. I would like to conclude uh, by summarizing. Uh, what we uh, talk about today in um, a simple conclusion. Uh, seas and oceans uh, will be uh, only able to provide solutions for uh, sustainable development of human communities if they are protected and healthy. Beyond life on Earth is simply impossible without healthy oceans. Therefore, let us all do our best in our capacities to clean the oceans up and keep them clean. Let's do that. Thank you, Ricardo, 
you have a last statement and I will myself pass the floor back to Olga. Okay, uh, I would like to refer to a, a Portuguese dear late friend of mine that many of you knew, Mario Ruivo, and uh, he in fact gives his name to some prizes related to ocean literacy and he was a fundamental piece in 98 International Year of the Ocean, a major environmental notion of ocean literacy held in my country in Lisbon that same year, the world exhibition exposition, the long exhibition entitled The Oceans Heritage for the Future. And he used to say this a lot, and I quote, that's the phrase. Against wind and seas, it is important to at least keep the raft afloat. But let me explain. Uh, this phrase mirrors his personality, and this is what I also wish for myself and for uh, those who are dedicated to putting ocean literacy on the agenda. We must all be persistent, never quit, and be surrounded by an unbreakable optimism that he had, and we will achieve our goals, hopefully. So that's my... Uh, message that it's not mine, it's from Mary Ruiz, uh, but that's what I was to bring here. Uh, optimism, fight, never quitting, and if the things go a little bit wrong, at least we make a big effort to make, to keep the raft afloat and never sink. Thank you. Many thanks to the three of you, Olga, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Inspiring statements. Uh, now we move to action and uh, I would like to give the floor to the five uh, small uh, very short pitches which will tell you what is ahead of us how we will <clears throat> take all this inspiration that you provided us in the uh, following workshops so I would like to introduce each of uh, the, the five uh, speakers we have uh, first uh, is the COFA um, the um, co-chair of the EU for Ocean platform, James Nicotin from Manaya Productions. And James will be introducing the platform uh, workshop, which will follow just right after this one. And I hope we don't run too uh, late over it. James, um, can you give us a one uh, minute in, uh, inspiration why people should join? Hello, thank you, Olga. Thank you for the introduction. Distinguished guests, dear friends, it's a pleasure to be here today to present to you the EU for Ocean platform, which holds its first series of workshops today and tomorrow. Uh, I have the privilege and responsibility to be inaugurating co-chair, and I'm alongside some distinguished friends and colleagues uh, that you will meet later on today. Um, so my guess is you aren't sure what the EU for Ocean platform is yet and what it will and can achieve. Uh, the truth is none of us does, and that's what we're here to find out. Um, what I do know is that we live on a blue planet. It's covered at 71% by the ocean. The ocean is home to 90% of the living space on the planet, and it pr produces half of the oxygen that we breathe. Uh, paradoxically, we know very little about the ocean. We only have 20% of it mapped, about 10% of its species discovered, and it is under threat, overfishing, habitat and biodiversity loss, pollution, including plastics, and the deadly trio of climate change, ocean warming, acidification, and deoxygenation. All this contributes to ocean decline that needs a robust response that many initiatives, among them the UN Ocean Decade and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and this coalition are part of. But beyond that, perhaps the most important thing that this EU for Ocean platform seeks to address is to make us fully aware of the implications and potential consequences of the ocean's decline or health uh, on our own livelihoods and health. So, so that's what we call ocean literacy. And by addressing this, the, ocean, the EU for Ocean platform brings together many stakeholders from across the EU and beyond in shaping a new narrative for the ocean centered around solutions, people and stories. We need to amplify our involvement in restoring the ocean's health, and we need to bring together stakeholders that don't necessarily have an obvious connection to the ocean. Francesca said that earlier. And so NGOs, industry, government, education, and media, fishers, and blue economy actors, we need to work together. I will quote Professor Jane Lubchenco, 
who said these words during the UN Decade of Ocean Science uh, preparatory meeting last year in Copenhagen. The ocean is not too big to fail. It is not too big to fix. It is too big to ignore. So the EU for Ocean platform is acknowledging the fundamental role the ocean plays in our lives and correlating it, the, 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 the possible continuation of our terrestrial activities and livelihoods on this planet with its health. So I'll conclude with a quote by Sylvia Earle, which sums it up nicely. We need to take care of the ocean as if our life depends on it, because it does. I look forward to seeing you later on. Uh, the platform workshop is a little bit delayed, but it should start right after this session. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, James. And yes, welcome uh, everybody to the second to the platform workshop, which will start right after. Now, one more pitch uh, for the afternoon. In the afternoon, we will look at what uh, the youth community has been doing, and uh, uh, I would like to invite Thomas to tell us uh, what would happen in the afternoon. Why? Uh, what, what the European youth is doing. Hello, my name is Thomas Zouzage. I'm 16 years old and I'm the founder of Children for the Ocean and uh, one of the founding members of uh, the Youth for Ocean Forum. So being born in Brittany in France, I spent most of my childhood next to the ocean and I have realized how the ocean is important for climate change and our lives on Earth. And we need to do more to preserve it and we need to do this together. So this is why I founded Children for the Ocean and I joined the Youth for Ocean Forum. So why joining the Youth for Ocean Forum? Well, as a member, you will have the unique opportunity through this forum to combine our efforts and promote ocean literacy widely in schools and in the civil society. And ocean literacy is key in our fight to save and protect the ocean. You will also have the unique opportunity through this forum to speak up, propose initiatives and local actions, raise awareness about the threats the ocean is facing, and finally, influence and inspire the decision-making process and hope for a better future for our ocean. Thank you, and I hope to see you at a workshop this afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. And uh, the, the workshop in the afternoon will continue into the third community, the, the Blue Schools. Uh, and we have with us uh, Nicola Bridge, who can uh, tell us just quickly what is in for at the, at the workshop ahead of us. We, we heard from the other speakers how important it is to be uh, to be in the formal education. So please tell us what, what's in the blue schools in the afternoon. Well, we've got an exciting afternoon for you. Um, but what we wanted to sort of get across really is um, how, how excited we are that this initiative is so based around people. Um, the recognition that all people, wherever you are, whoever you are, can do something to support the health of our ocean. And really what better people and, and what more important people to get involved um, than children and uh, school teachers. So the EU network of blue schools is there to empower teachers with the knowledge, understanding and practical considerations to help them embed uh, the ocean into their classroom every day if they want to. Um, it will also engage children, uh, supporting them to feel optimistic about the future and their positive impact. And really importantly, it will build on the uh, professional connections that people already have uh, across Europe and bring children along for the ride and, and hopefully help them to make new friendships across uh, their schools. Uh, but most of all, it will be fun. Um, so I'm having some fun now with my hair in the background here. I, I, you know, I look like I'm in a disco. I've got blue teeth as well, which is very exciting. Um, and as Olga said earlier on, today is all about being, uh, having fun too. Learning happens best when you're having fun. Um, so our workshop this afternoon, uh, hopefully is going to be really interactive. We've already worked um, across Europe with several, uh, doing several teacher focus groups to find out what, what they think they would like. Uh, from this initiative and we've started to design and, and produce a handbook for them that will be full of practical uh, examples to help them to embed the ocean into their school. Um, so uh, the workshop later today uh, will continue that journey, uh, helping us to think about how we can get the ocean into the curriculum across Europe. 
So we're going to be hearing from teachers. We've got actual real teachers coming to our workshops so we can hear their inspiring stories and how they're already working uh, to bring the ocean into their classroom and various other ocean education experts from networks across Europe. Um, participants in our workshop are going to be asked to complete polls um, so that we can work out what are the best principles and the key topics that are going to be required to really help the professional development of blue schools across Europe. And there are going to be lots of opportunities for you to ask questions, comment, um, and make sure that you get your uh, thoughts across um, to the workshop so that everybody um, gets a chance to, to really uh, support this, this initiative. Um, so if you're passionate about supporting the next generation, uh, you should come to our workshop later on today and have some fun with us. With blue team. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Nicola. Very inspiring. I think many people will be joining you in the afternoon. And uh, I just want to quickly introduce uh, the, the very operational, practical workshops which will take place tomorrow. And I give the floor to Elisa to say what will be in these thematic workshops, the three groups that will be run in parallel tomorrow morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you, Olga, for your introduction. As you already said, I am the chair of the working group Healthy and Clean Ocean. And for people that will join this working group, I, have, I want to throw down a challenge, a challenge that I think is perfectly in line with uh, uh, what people before me said. And this, uh, this challenge is how can we help citizens in European landlocked or inland areas to become ocean literate? So for people that want to grab this challenge, I will wait you tomorrow from 10 to 12. And what we are going to do, we will look for ideas for effective and concrete action for every kind of tip and tricks that can bring closer the ocean to the people and people to the ocean. So be active and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lisa. And the, the last flavor is from the Sea Basin Workshops. Pierre, <laughs> could you tell us what will, it is? I will not say very much there. Uh, what you need to remember, and it was said before, is that there are emerging ocean literacy communities in the different sea basins, and the workshop will provide them opportunities to start co-developing co-developing ocean literacy strategies, co-developing ocean literacy initiative and activities. So please, from wherever you come, different sectors, join us and be co-builder. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Everybody now we're, I think, a bit overstating uh, our time of the opening, but and we need to close this opening workshop to actually drive into the action. But before we close, and in fact, uh, maybe it is just the opening of the other many doors, I would like to ask uh, Andreas Trajinescu, who can introduce and, uh, and tell us about the contest that we run this summer, the Young Ocean Waves. And uh, I would ask Andrea to introduce uh, the, the winners. Now, if we would uh, just a, a moment that we would share a screen, yes. And hello, hello, Andrea. Uh -huh. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see so many people connected and uh, a high level of energy. <laughs> so, yes. um, thank you very much. Because we are a little bit late, I will try to be as short as possible. But of course, not to neglect the importance of our contest. So it was a contest that was run during the summer and we asked young people to share with us what the ocean means to them. And uh, we had uh, 136 entries and let's see our third winner. It's Gabriele Tiskevicute. I hope I didn't uh, kill the name. So Gabriele, it's... Uh, uh, from Lithuania and of course she has a huge passion for ocean. She loves all things water related, uh, swimming, snorkeling, scuba diving and for her taking a plunge into the sea feels like entering a sacred place where all the real life problems and time disappear. And uh, let's see the video of uh, Gabriele.
Gabriele will receive uh, some uh, nice uh, things from Nausica. So this was the third place. Now for the second, it's Mariana Mate Lara. Uh, what ocean means to her? Everything, passion and her place to peace. So Mariana has always been in love with the ocean. She graduated from management of coastal areas in her bachelor, did a specialization in marine uh, conservation afterwards and a master in environmental policy. Uh, it, she had amazing experience related to the ocean and uh, she was swimming with hammerhead sharks in the Coco Island, but not only, she was also playfully bitten by a sea lion in the Gulf of California. So let's see what the ocean is for Mariana. Thank you very much. And uh, the prize will be a National Geographic annual subscription. And now the first place, it's Jamila Tassin. Uh, growing up in the Canary Islands, she has been surrounded by the ocean for as long as she can remember. She is an Icelander, fully passionate about sailing and about the seas, but also she graduated in oceanography and has a very small sailboat dedicated to cross the Atlantic. So let's see the video of Jamila. So these were the uh, three, so uh, the, the, the three uh, winners, a GoPro camera for Jamila. We had 10 uh, finalists and we'll see the video during the break. Unfortunately, we are not able to run all of them due to the short time. These were, I could say, individual experience, individual expression of the love for the ocean. But in order to succeed in our activities, we need all of us to work together. So let's try to make from this two-day event the beginning of a journey in which all of us, we are going to support the ocean literacy in Europe and even uh, beyond it. It's, it's really important that everybody has a contribution. This, we had today three winners, but all of us can be a winner by engaging. Thank you very much. And uh, now the break and we we'll have the possibility to see the videos. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much, all the speakers, all the people who listen to us. Very inspiring words. I don't think we can say any better. The video will be available, accessible on the European Maritime Forum. Thanks for energy and optimism. Good luck. <laughs>